YouTube family. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, I'm Devin on deck. And this is the series where we just kind of kick back, we chill, we connect, and I show you all of my pickups from the previous month. Since it's April, I'm showing you everything from March, obviously. And as a lot of y'all know, I spent my last month basically the whole time in Japan. So I got accessories to show you, clothing, a new category for this channel, books. And then we're gonna talk about the Japan vlogs. Yes, there will be multiple and I would love your input on them. And of course, at the very end, for those who wanna stick around, a personal life update. Okay, now getting into accessories, I first wanna show you the jewelry that I picked up. This first one isn't quite ready yet because it's a long process to make. Me and Shanae, my wife, got custom grills by this gentleman right here. His name is Tetsuya Akiyama and he is the owner of Grills Jewels, the only grill maker in the entire country of Japan. I've been following this guy on Instagram for the last couple years and as you can see, his work has a lot of range. This is the first place we went as soon as we got to Tokyo. And they should be coming in the mail in the next few weeks. And then we have the OG Ken Scratch. This is a guy who's been making jewelry for over 40 years. I'm so glad I stumbled across his shop and I picked up this bracelet, which it looks like giant dog tag links. This silver band, which has intentionally imperfect edges, as you can see. And then finally this ring, which feels kind of steampunk to me, but a little bit more elegant. And I got one more slim silver band to stack with it to make it complete. And then we have this ring by Jill Sander. Now this is not really unique to Japan. You can find this online. So I did link it down below with everything else in this video. But when I stumbled across this at Beams Plus, I had to get a closer look. And to my surprise, it's a loose link ring. So it's a lot more comfortable to wear than I expected. And it's a perfect standalone statement piece. I also got a couple pair of glasses. These first ones are by Matsuda. These were actually a gift from my brother, Jeremy Mitchell, one of my close friends from NYC. And if y'all follow me on Instagram, you probably saw them in like half my stories. And then we have these by Ivan. And I picked them up at their flagship store in Kyoto. And you see me wear these hella times already in a different colorway, but this one was an in-store exclusive. So I had to get my hands on it. And last but not least in the accessory section, I got a couple bags. This first one's from a brand called Mr. Hollywood. Ironic, I know. It's a small open tote that converts into a pouch. And of course, y'all know I had to hit up Porter and clean up. When I tell y'all it is so much cheaper to get these in Japan, I had to get like four or five of them. And look out for the blue ones in the upcoming photo shoot for on deck. Now moving on to clothing. This shirt is from Mr. Hollywood as well. And I'm telling you, it is the lightest weight long sleeve I've ever worn. I think it's like a silk crepe material but I love the cut, I love how it feels. And I'ma keep wearing this until the weather gets too hot. And then we have these jeans by FAF, which stands for Fake Ass Flowers. They're an up and coming local brand to Japan. If you Google their name, you might see like one Hype Beast article, but the quality on these is outstanding. And as you can see, they fit my long ass legs. So if you are a bigger person or a taller person, don't worry, everybody wears oversized clothes out there. So you're in good company and you'll definitely find something that fits you. Now, the last thing I want to show y'all in the clothing section is this striped tee by Willie Chavaria. Now this designer is based out of New York, but this colorway was a special edition for the boutique that I found it at. And this brand is pricey, but I did find the same shirt on sale in a slightly different colorway, but for way less than what I even paid for it. So you know where to find the links if you like what you see. Okay, now moving on to books. I got three for you. This first one is a Porter 80th anniversary. You guys know I'm a huge fan of this bag and luggage brand. And I picked this up in their old Osaka store when I was out there. And as you can see, it's wrapped in their signature nylon. This one is called Unlikely Things by Beams Plus creative director, Shinsuke Nakata. And if this is your first time hearing about Beams Plus, they're what Aime Leon Dor wish they were. They've been around since 1999. And in this book, it's a collection of different items from clothing to interior design, miscellaneous goods and art. Cause as y'all know, style is much more than just what you wear. And this Rolex book is a gem. I picked it up in a vintage watch store and it's by the late great Shigaharu Aratake. He is said to have single single-handedly started the vintage watch boom in Japan. Since the 80s, he has amassed a ridiculous collection in quantity and quality of watches from Rolex to Omega to Patek. And although he's not world famous, he's definitely a legend in his own right. And this thick ass book is just his Rolex collection in London. And the craziest part is the store that I got it from is the one that he opened in 2004. And I had no idea till I got home and did my research. Crazy. Okay, now let's talk about these vlogs. The game plan is to make 
big three. The first one would be like our overall itinerary from art galleries to go-karts in the street, street style, scenery, cultural differences, because I know a lot of y'all are wondering about that. The second one's gonna be about shopping, all my favorite places that I went to. And number three will be about food, all the best places that I ate or drank. So you'll see bars, you'll see restaurants, you'll see coffee shops, but here's where you come in. If there's any specific questions you have, I need to know right now in the comments. If you want me to talk about a specific topic and you want me to lean harder a certain direction, you wanna know more about coffee, more about food, more about cultural differences, more about street style, you let me know, okay? And I will make sure to accommodate everything that I possibly can, but I gotta know what y'all want because as you know, these vlogs are for y'all. I have no other reason to make them except that you want to see them. So let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Now moving on to the life update. The biggest question I think that I would have for myself if I were you and what I had to ask myself every day since I've been back home, how do I feel? Like how does this trip affect me? And the simple answer is that it's really changed my life. It's expanded my mind, right? Like the culture is so different there. I've never gone to a place that didn't speak English as the first language or where most people didn't speak English. You know what I mean? Like I was definitely very obviously the other, but I wasn't made to feel like the other, like I am even here at home in certain places, certain states. You know what I mean? Very, very interesting, very enjoyable, but it definitely expanded my mind for sure. And speaking of that and kind of moving on to the little bit of that therapy talk, you guys know I've been doing that now for two months and I had a couple sessions when I was out there. And one thing that I expressed to my therapist, I was like, yo man, like I feel really safe out here in the streets. Like I'm out here walking the streets at two in the morning, Rolex on, no big deal. And the same thing with an old lady with her Chanel, like in the middle of the inner city. That just doesn't happen here in America. And then he asked me this. He said, when's the last time you felt safe? I didn't have an answer for him. That blew my mind. Yeah, apparently for the first time ever, I felt safe in Japan, which is wild. And if you're picking up what I'm putting down, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Not everybody can relate, but that's just me and my personal experience. But yeah, this trip is definitely going to affect everything I do going forward because there's no way that I get to experience this and see this that I've been wanting to experience since I was a kid and not honor that. I have a responsibility now to take everything that inspired me and let it affect the work that I do, how I dress, what I speak about, like you're gonna see my style get a little bit more free. So whether you like the new silhouettes I've been wearing or you don't like them, they come in. I'm gonna keep trying new different things because people dress so outside the box there. And even my designs with On Deck, you're gonna see a lot of influence there as well. So look forward to things to get shaken up. I feel like I have a whole new level I'm about to hit and I'm so, so, so excited to show y'all what I got cooking for the future. So yeah, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. You know that, you know I appreciate you y'all, man. And as always, thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.